So, as far as what happened, well, first of all, you know we get to the point. Here's the point. He put on too much muscle. Now, he he was hurt. I know you have to have an opinion because you understand the, the body, you understand the physiology of, of the science of, of nutrition and of, of training properly. You do, Ken. I mean, you just ran a freaking marathon in a world championship caliber level. You understand that. And he bulked up too much. He bulked up. He was burning too much fuel. I tweeted, my, my man Rob does a great job. He put those tweets out. We did. We got really big numbers with them, what he told me. But wait a minute, my back is killing me. Hold to your point, the more muscle you have, the more red blood cells you need. Exactly. Because the blood has to carry oxygen to those muscles. It doesn't matter how much you train. You still need a lot more oxygen. You're, you're going to burn a lot more oxygen, which is going to tax your cardiovascular system. Exactly. So there's a fine line at every weight class of how much muscle is enough. Yeah, to your point, the more muscle, more you need to be, the more fitness you need. Listen, he put too much muscle on. He was too bulky. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm putting it in simplistic forms, but I'm putting it in true forms where he's a perfect example why the old-time trainers, the great old-time trainers, used to say it was taboo for their fighters to lift weights. Now, they weren't 100% right, but this is the example. They thought it, they thought it, made, it made muscles that were not fluid, that w were not sinewy, that... that would restrict you, would be cumbersome, would be difficult uh, to Not throw... Pliable. Yeah, to throw smooth fight uh, punches uh, that would wear you down, that would restrict you. That's what they felt. This is the perfect example of what they didn't want. And this is the example of why they didn't think lifting weights was compatible to fighting or to being a great boxer. But what they didn't know back in those days was that you that you do have the ability to lift weights in a in a controlled manner, in a proper manner, in a responsible manner, with all the technology we have, where it can add strength, it can do the job you want without adding just bulk, without doing the things they didn't want done, where, where they lost flexibility, they lost speed, uh, they they lost you know uh, they they lost fluidity. Uh, if you do it right, you don't have to lose those things. But if you do it to the level that he did it, that Wilder did it, then it speaks to what these old-time trainers were afraid of, that it does it does give you a burden to deal with. You're, you're, burning, you're burning too much fuel during the fight, number one. Now, put it in a very simple way, um, but you're burning too much fuel. And if you look at them and follow what I'm about to say, and remember the fight. It looks like he's throwing punches wearing a suit that's two sizes too small. That that's what it looked like. In other words, he's restricted. He's re now he still had power. I know he dropped Fury. He caught him coming in with that right hand. He timed him. It was a good shot. Uh, by the way, both guys when they initially got hurt, it was kind of interesting. They didn't get hurt with the punches to the chin. They got hurt with the punches to the temple. To the temple. That that's interesting. But having said that, he looked like a guy fighting in a suit that that was restricted in throwing his punches, and he was he was wearing a suit. It was a new it was a new body that that was wrapped around him. And I think I'm making no excuses. Fury won because of why he won. I just explained that. I explained the most important part first, not last. But he. He was already hampered because he doesn't, nobody ever taught him good technique, how to use his power really consistently, properly. He just had power. And it got him out of trouble, but it also got him in trouble. Here's a funny thing. His greatest weapon, his offense, that's Wilder's greatest strength is his offense. It's also his greatest weakness because it is so uneducated uh, it is so unsophisticated, it is so wrong that when he throws, he leaves him, if he don't land, which is quite often, he leaves himself wide open for a counter. He, he leaves himself exposed. So his greatest weapon, his offense is his greatest, also his greatest enemy. It, it's, it's amazing. 
but it's but it's true and then add to the equation here that you take his greatest weapon his offense his power you know his punching ability and you put the suit on him that he's got to wear <laughs> and and he's restricted all night and he complained about a 45 pound suit that wore him out on the way to the ring in the in their rematch well this time he really had something to complain about because he had that suit all night long that was just yep. burning up his petrol burning up his gas tank and you can see it you can see you know i tweeted one time he was existing he was fighting at one point and it was early in the fight too on nothing but fumes instinct and heart he it really he really that's why it was extraordinary what he did that's why i give him the credit that i give him today because that's what he was fighting on and this this is a guy now here's the other part of the equation the flip side to this coin ken that a lot of people wouldn't go into that's for me the f easy part the obvious part that he was too bulky that he was burning up too much fuel he was restricted uh in what he could do because of the growth of muscles the way he grew them so quickly but here's the other part i want to touch on why did he do that see that's it why did he do that i tell you why he did that psychological which is 90 percent of this 85 90 75 it's at least 75 percent of it the mental frame where you are mentally he did it because he had all his confidence knocked out of him in that last fight he did it because he he needed something to get him in that ring to believe he needed a crutch. Yeah, I know it's a tough word. I know it's a tough word. I know it is. But listen, I, I can say it. I've lived it. I've been there. I, I've seen it. And I gave him all the accolades that he deserves. But he was looking for help. And he looked in the wrong places. Because you know the funny thing to me, Mr. Wilder? At the end of the day, in that fight, you found the help, the only help you ever needed. It was you. It was there all along. It was you. Yeah, you needed someone to teach you better, but you 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 found the only help you really needed. It wasn't the bulk of muscle. It was what was inside of you. It was you. That's all you ever needed. That's all you ever needed. And you looked in the wrong places. And I understand why, because of how desperate you were. And how empty you were, even though you wouldn't admit it in certain areas of belief. But at the end of the day, you looked in the wrong place. Because when you almost pulled this fight out, where did that help come from? Deontay Wilder. It came from you. And I'm going to say another thing. Early, for the people that want to say, well, was his technique improved? Again, if it was, I'd say yes. It wasn't. At the end of the day, it wasn't. It wasn't. I'm sorry for the people that don't like to hear such things. I'm sorry. But it wasn't. You know, I'd like to say I was the next Robert Redford. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I'm not. I'm not. Okay? I'm not. And And... So and for the people who want to say, oh, yeah, he was improved. And the commentators that get a little intoxicated, they get a little nutty. Oh, he's getting, he's getting better. He's Listen, it was window dressing. It was, it was a little bit of perception early on when he went to the body with the jab and he threw the right hand. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it hit what was going to be seen later that couldn't be hidden. But early on, it did hide it. It disguised it. It 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 dressed it up. It 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 gave the perception that he was better technically because by throwing to the body, he didn't fall off balance. He didn't do the things that 
he did later on when he threw to the head. The things that I talked about the week before the fight in our podcast, when he throws right hands like freaking frisbees on a beach and he hits the sunbathers in the head. You know, guy sitting there with freaking <laughs> copper tone on and, and he's trying to read a good book and then bang, he gets hit in the freaking forehead with a frisbee. You know, well, <laughs> I mean, he went back to throwing frisbees again. He did. But early on, he didn't. He threw to the body. So it gave the look. It disguised it. It disguised it that his technique was a little better. But then when he went back to being him and having to do more than throw to the body and having to throw the punches to the head, it was all there to see. His fundamentals, they stunk. They stunk as they have stunk. And it, 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 again, his greatest weapon, his offense, gets him in trouble because when he misses, he leaves himself available to be exposed, to be caught. And he did. And Fury's better technique and Fury being what Wada was seeking to be, that guy that found his soul, that guy that had the answers, that guy that knew who he was, who he was. He found that out in their first fight. He was fighting that guy and the guy who was technically miles ahead of him. And it showed in every area. <laughs> 